Gladiators was sponsored by Del Monte Fruit Burst. What a refreshing combination. She was a beautiful, successful 40-something, but she was never the blushing bride. That's me, the world's oldest living bridesmaid. But temptation was just around the corner. Male secretary. Men type faster. Huh? Shorter nails. You can sew. Could he be the answer to her dreams? Oh. Oh. A romantic comedy, the world's oldest living bridesmaid, next Wednesday at 9.30 on 4. A crafty basket full of wicked impressions next from Rory Bremner. Who else? A chunky out on young. Being single has never been so much fun. Lines are open 24 hours, so call the Singles Network on 0891 808 808. Commercial Union. We won't make a drama out of a crisis. John and I are rivals when it comes to sniffing out a story. Dude. But it's a bit hard when you've got a blocked up nose. Dirty thousand. No, dirty thousand. I didn't think he'd notice. <laughs> Life's full of surprises. Only Vicks Sinex has the Vicks Vapors. And it has a decongestant so you can breathe easily. Is that clear? For up to 12 hours. We make a pretty good team. Some things never change. Vic Sinex works fast, lasts for hours. So, uh, come on! Okay, let's hit it! Where we go, Daddy O! With National Lottery Instance, you could win one thousand pounds. Or five thousand pounds. Or maybe just a hundred pounds. Uh, forget it all. For an instant. Choose life. Choose a job. Choose a career. Choose your future. Who are you waiting for? Choose train spotting. Buy it now on video. If, like me, you spend Christmas glued to the telly, then get this great guide to all the TV. Free with tomorrow's sun. Funny looking so. Not as funny as you. Anyway, it's not safe, it's clear as still. Helps keep my spots under control. But you're not spotty. That's because I use clear as still every day. But why if you're not spotty? Because I don't want them back. Oh, why? Look, bacteria in the skin cause spots. Clear as still face wash kills more bacteria than ordinary soap. In fact, it's twice as effective. Looking good. <laughs> Thank you, gee. Clear as still face wash helps stop spots every day. Chuck, try lifting one of these. Hey, Tarquil, your trolleys aren't right way round. Mm. New Manchester Gold from Boddington's.
Energizer with new on battery tester. Just press the two green dots. And you know your battery will keep on going when you need it most. Now, from Energizer, the new on battery tester. Power you can depend on. With a Pentium processor inside your PC and the CD-ROM launch, you can see amazing concerts and interviews from great new bands. And since it's a connected CD-ROM, it'll hook straight into a related website through your computer's internet link. So you can actually go online and send emails to bands you've just seen playing. The Intel Pentium processor. It's the business. So, pitch me a movie. Three flatmates find a million and bury a corpse. It's not deep enough. Oh, I'm so happy I could die. That basic instinct meets die hard. But no. Scottish. Next. There's a porn actress on the run. I just want to change my life. There are no stars, just talent. Pretty woman meets the fugitive. <sighs> Next. He sacrifices fame for love. He'll get rid of you. He'll finish with you. It's passion, tragic. Please, please. He is the real fifth beetle. Sweet in that ending, you got Sleepless in Seattle, the musical. <sighs> Next. They're adrenaline junkies. Come on. They love shopping. They never have my size. Hate the police. Thelma and Louise meets Waterworld, but on land. And one of them's a guy. No, not at all. Forrest Gump meets Pulp Fiction, meets Out of Africa, meets Apollo 13, meets Bambi, meets the Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Film on 4 premiere. Originality meets talent. Thursday nights on 4. This is Channel 4. <laughs> That's my impression. Scientists have found an ancient jaw that could be as old as 300,000 years, uh, which is round about when Bruce Forsyth started working at the London Palladium. I say to see you, to see you, I say. That was super lovely. I always wondered what Bruce Forsyth was like in real life. And this year I saw him at Wimbledon, and he was exactly the same. You know, oh, look, here, here come the girls now. They're on to the, on to the, oh, oh, good game, good game, dear. Yeah. Then they started doing the practice serves, and of course, you know, they, nobody returns the serves, and he's going, no, 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 she started already, dear. <laughs> started already, poor, 30 love, 30 love, 30 love, dear. <laughs> I mean, can you take him anywhere? Can you imagine the sort of state occasion, Brucey on Remembrance Sunday? <laughs> Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. Didn't they do well? Well done, then. <laughs> <laughs> I was in the war, yes, I used to be a tail gunner. Look, there's an Iraqi. <laughs> Shut up. No, 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 I said it's a little bit parky. <laughs> Dad, do the pose, do the pose, do the pose. Serious moment, mustn't laugh. Come to pay respects at the cenotaph. <laughs> Marvellous, thank you. Thank you. Well, a big story this week. The biggest story, the biggest story of the week, lottery lovers. Mm. What's that? <laughs> After 18 months. Mm. <laughs> After 18 months, the books are back. Yes, he thought they'd disappeared, but now they're back. <laughs> Two volumes of Conservative Party central office jokes about Labour's tax plans. Resurfaced this week, containing such gems as my wife's so fat, they've introduced a new land tax to cover her hips. <laughs> How many, mm, how many civil servants does it take to change a light bulb? Fifty. One to change the light bulb, and forty-nine to work out how much more it would cost under labour. <laughs> Elsewhere, it was another week when you couldn't move for stories about Fergie. I mean, really, my secret life, my story, the truth about me and those men. I mean, what the bloody hell's going on? <laughs> this isn't biography, this is colonic irrigation. <laughs> It's the ultimate death wish. You're about to pop and suddenly your entire adult life passes in front of your eyes and it's all shit. <laughs> and none of it's your fault. And which national publication gets the serial right? Hello Magazine. Didn't they have another bidder fighting off an offer from what bike? <laughs> With articles everywhere. With articles... With articles everywhere, if he found your copy didn't contain an article about Fergie, your news agent would give you a refund. <laughs> and then there's the chat shows, you know, all the chat show stuff and the TV appearances, Oprah, Diane Sawyer, Ruby Wax, 
Noel's house party. <laughs> the trouble is the effect all this has on your status. I mean, by this time next year, she'll have done so many chat shows, you'll have Clive James saying, thank you for joining us, the Duchess of York. And now, on to our main guest, Bill Ardy. <laughs> Meanwhile, the United States of America refused to back a second term for United Nations Secretary General Rutgers, Rutgers. The UN is now discredited and rife with overmanning and duplication. Now look at this guy, Boutros Boutros. Why do we need two Boutroses running this thing? Now they say, they say they're short of money. They say they're short of money. If they were to do something about their lack of funds, then we might consider giving them some of the $1.6 billion we owe them. <laughs> OK, right, let's move on. OK, and other news, and it's announced that uh, Pamela Anderson is to get divorced from Tommy Lee. Uh, she says he can keep the cash uh, as long as she can keep the plastic. <laughs> uh, Michael Jackson says he spent his wedding night in Sydney. Well, plus <laughs> Thank you. And then eventually the doctor said, the baby's out. And I demanded to see the replay with the dead <laughs> um, And the trick is to cast the fly in such a way that it sinks just upstream of the trout, so he can't resist taking the... Uh, the... Oh, hello, I think we got one. Um, Gordon Brown joins me now on the line from Westminster to discuss Labour's tax policies, with simultaneous translation for the hard of voting from Labour's foreign affairs spokesman, Robin Cook. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Brown, can we be clear, as Shadow Chancellor, you're responsible for Labour's economic policy? Uh, that's correct, Jeremy, yes. <laughs> and there's no disagreement about that? Uh, no, none whatsoever. Uh, right, tell us your tax plans, then. Well, I'd love to, uh, but then I'm afraid I'd have to kill you. <laughs> Why? Uh, well, firstly, we don't want to tell anyone. Secondly, they're a matter of delicate financial judgment. And 95thly, uh, we're waiting to see what the Tories do. Um, what is this about Europe, Mr. Brown? Uh, it's still the preferred intention of a Labour government uh, to enter the first wave of a single European currency, <laughs> which remains Britain's best option, and which will ensure that we remain at the heart of the discussion over the European Union. <laughs> But only last week you were forced to concede that Labour would hold a referendum first. A bit of a blow, isn't it? Uh, reading him slowly. <laughs> Not in the least. It is, uh, in every sense, a prudent move, and I entirely support it. <laughs> is this because Labour's Eurosceptics want a feel-good first term and want to keep Europe for later? Uh, no. I think that's much too cynical of you to think. Uh, one final question. Let's move on to uh, 1998. It's the second year of a Labour government. As Labour Chancellor, what will you be saying? I shall be saying thank you very much. <laughs> Robbie Cook, thank you. Thank you. Tomorrow, Anne Widdicombe. Dry fly or ledger? <laughs> You're very lucky. They're not due to open my mouth again till after the election. <laughs> Finally, Mr. P. O'Downey from Ulster writes in to Dear ITN to ask why he never sees my lower half. Well, Mr. O'Downey, the answer is quite simple. There is no lower half. It was surgically removed, just after the main points, six years ago, when ITN realised I wouldn't need a regular lower body or legs. And for those few occasions when I require the full set, well, I hire a working set of arse and pins from a local theatrical supplier who provide valuable employment for entertainers who fall on hard time. So, now you know not only why you never see my lower half, but also exactly what happened to Bob Carroll G's. Well, I'll tell you the thing that's going to make my mind up about, uh, you know, the election is, is the uh, European single currency. That's what's going to make me decide which way I vote at the general election. Oh, no, you can't do that. What do you mean I can't do it? It's not allowed. Why? Because all the parties have said there's going to be a referendum about the single currency, so you're going to have to vote about something else in the general election. Well, like, like what? I don't know. You want a free country. I mean, lots of other issues. <coughs> is Tony Blair's hair born. Oh, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to vote on the European single currency in the election. Yes, well, no, well, they, they won't let you. They won't let you. 
You've got to wait for a referendum. But, Bobby, this is the single most important decision that's going to be taken in my lifetime. Well, he, he may be, but he's bad. Yeah. Yeah, the, <laughs> no, none of the parties are going to talk about the single currency before the elections, so we can't talk about it. Well, I think that's stupid, isn't it? I mean, what's the point in having a general election when the most important thing about it is being left out? Yes, oh, no, 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 I keep telling you, they're going to deal with that separately at a, at a referendum. According to my paper, the Labour Party are going to have 13 separate referendums <laughs> on 13 different topics. Like what? Well, Scottish devolution, proportional representation, and 11 other things. <laughs> Well, I, th I think this is ridiculous. I mean, we'll be spending all our time doing referendums. Yes. I mean, if they're going to leave these decisions to us, there'll be a referendum every day. Yes. I'll have to cancel my pottery classes. <laughs> yeah. I? Yes, you will. Yes, you will. But it is your civic duty. You know? But I can't, I can't say I'm sorry I can't come to pottery this week, Mrs. Giddings, because I've, I've got to decide, you know, whether this country needs to buy a new nuclear submarine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the teapot will never get finished. That's you know. <laughs> you know, I think, at, you know, at the bottom of it, it is that these politicians are simply once again getting out of doing any work, aren't they? So that they can spend all day on the golf course and getting jobs in banks. Well, no, no, I think, uh, be, be fair, be fair. I mean, they, they say that the reason is that they won't know enough about the single currency by the time of the election. Well, that's pathetic, isn't it? I mean, they don't know about it, so they're going to ask us. <laughs> I mean, how are we going to find out about it in time? I mean, how are you going to find out? Well, I, I go down to the library, I suppose. I mean, they, they're bound to have a book about it. Or, or, or the, the Citizens' Advice Bureau. <laughs> <laughs> they were very helpful when my roof blew off onto my cat. <laughs> but, I mean, why can't the politicians go to the library? Surely they've got a library, yes, haven't you, they? You, you'd think so. You'd well, think I think so, it's intolerable. You? I'm yes. sorry. I think it's an intolerable burden to place on us. Yes. I mean, already, you know, we, we, we vote once every five years, isn't Absolutely. that enough? You think so, wouldn't you? Yes. Mm. So what's going to happen? Well, they're, they're, they're going to have a general election in which nobody talks about the, the, the single currency. Nobody talks about nobody it. Nobody talks about it. Nobody thinks about it. And then, after that, they're going to have a referendum about it. And what then? Well, I, I don't know. Gordon Brown, wait a minute, there's something he says in here. Yes. He said, Gordon Brown says, then we would have to make the decision about what would happen if the referendum was lost. <laughs> what do you mean, make a decision? I mean, that's what we've already done for him. Isn't that the whole point of it? Well, you know, I mean, I, I suppose they'd have to decide whether they're going to take any notice of what we decided. <laughs> so we've gone to all this trouble. I've cancelled the pottery classes. Yes. <laughs> and then they're going to say, they have to make their minds up as to whether they're going to take any notice of what we're going to say. Well, I suppose so. I well, I mean, I mean, honestly, it's like me saying, uh, Peter, would you like another beer? And you say no. And then I have to make up my mind what I'm going to do about it. <laughs> I mean, am I going to buy you another beer anyway and let it sit here? Or am I going to drink it? And I'm going to do that time after time until I won't care what you say about it. <laughs> Well, I mean, I suppose, I suppose they, they can't just take what we tell them. Why not? Well, because we don't know anything about it. We've established that fact, haven't we? Yes, but you might have gone down by the library by, by then. Yes. Yes. By the book. Well, well, why should it be me all the time? I can't run the country on my own. I mean, why, <laughs> why can't you go to the library for once? Well, I borrowed a book about yoga two years ago, and I haven't taken it back. <laughs> but, but, I mean, the point surely is I can't understand why we've got to wait until after the election before we can have the referendum. What difference does it make? Well, the difference will be that the, the party that's in power after the general election, whatever it is, will be the same party that's still in power after the referendum, whichever way it goes. So it doesn't matter what we decide? Not to them, no, no. <laughs> but, but Gordon Brown does say he thinks we ought to have a national debate on the single currency. I see. So, all right, well, let's have the general, uh, the national debate, and then we'll make up our minds one way or the other, and then we can have the election. No, 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 we can have the national debate, but we mustn't make up our minds. That's the whole point. <laughs> <laughs> well, I suppose we'd better begin, anyway. Yes, How so. do we go about it? Well, well, I suppose to a certain extent we are having a national debate here, you, you and me.
Hardly a national debate, does no. it? No, <laughs> we could broaden it out. We, we could have a debate with the Red Lion. They could come down here, they could have a team, and we could have a team. We could debate that on Wednesday night. No, we can't do it on Wednesday night. That's Trivial Pursuit Night. No, <laughs> well, we could combine the two. Nobody would notice. <laughs> Uh, but on the other hand, I can burn a hole in a piece of paper just by looking at it. <laughs> Did anyone see the news about Eurotunnel this week? Yeah. Because yeah. apparently, you know, it had a bit of a fire in a tunnel. I don't know. Did, did you see that? <laughs> this is the freight train crossing the channel. Everyone panic. Quick, grab a wet flannel. Blistered crack concrete slabs starting to fall. Wait for an hour, then give Kent fire a call. Open side freight wagons, risk to well known. Rules are amended to cut costs to the bone. Systems for safety now called into doubt, but still hailed a success because they all just got out. <laughs> yeah. uh, in the meantime, managers say Eurotunnel passengers can expect severe delays, disruption, and cancellations as soon as they resume normal service. <laughs> now, booking procedures are to be introduced. Uh, smoking or non-smoking? <laughs> the fire itself raged at 1,000 degrees, that's gas mark 900, for eight hours along an 800-metre stretch of track, giving rise to what the president of Eurotunnel called uh, an unpleasant incident. <laughs> You'd think on a scale of naught to, oh, my God, it's a disaster! It would rate, you know, just a bit higher than that. And your star? I uh, have the freedom to think, to dream, to breathe. <laughs> <laughs> and this, this was a disaster they said could never happen. Or was that the last fire? I can't remember. <laughs> Odder still was that Eurostar have confirmed that two workers at the French end saw the train going into the tunnel with smoke coming out but didn't do anything about it. <laughs> oh, it's okay, it's going that way. <laughs> OK, so uh, within an hour, within an hour, everything is scalding hot. Well, except the food, obviously. Um, <laughs> and the other thing to come out was the instruction to staff that in the event of fire, the main recommendation was to get out as fast as possible. Which seems odd, because, you know, you thought people would want to stand around and watch for a bit. You know. <laughs> but it comes up this romantic image of somebody standing on the cliffs at Folkestone, looking down at the entrance of the tunnel below, and the train comes shooting out about 200 miles an hour, back-end blazing, driver leaning around saying, for God's sake, keep pedalling! <laughs> At least it'd be the only time the speed this side would match the speed of the French side. <laughs> but yes, it's like that again, it's like that, that Bernard Cribbin song, isn't it? You like digging a hole? Here I was, digging his hole, hole in the ground, so big and kind of round it was beneath the sea. To Paris, with a toll at the entrance and a duty free. Then along comes a bloke from the city and he leans on his brolly and farts. He says, hold your hole, cause you're heading for disaster from the start. <laughs> so off we go, six months late, trying to cut a corner when it ought to be straight. <laughs> Went up dark, dug a second shaft, had to fund the whole thing on an overdraft. <laughs> we did, we're never going to pay it back. Hello, new voici, digging the hole, cost a bloody fortune, paying all of their moles. What a rigmarole, takes its toll. On the budget and the safety and the cost control, then along Ooh. comes out the prick from the city and he picks out his nostril and says, Give a dog a bone, give the Euro losers a loan. <laughs> and that's why now, when the hole's been dug, it's still leaking Luca like a loose bowel plug. Debts to pay, total disarray. It will never make a profit before Judgment Day. It won't. <laughs> Why wait for beautiful hair? You can have amazing shine from the first time you use Organics Root Nourishing Shampoo and Conditioner. Healthy looking shine instantly. Les, give it a rest. Sorry, boss. Big Les, you got bought the best dressed man last year. I don't understand it. He wears exactly the same as me. Now you can use your Comet Price Index finger to find the lowest prices on multimedia computers, like this Commodore P120, for instance, with Intel Pentium processing power for under a thousand pounds. It's in the Comet Price Index, your guide to the lowest prices around. Look out for it in the national papers every Saturday. The Comet Price Index. Better come to Comet. In 1899, Montana was an unspoiled wilderness. 
a place where a man could put aside the cares of civilization and discover his true self in the sanctity of nature. At least, that's how it used to be, till something better came along. Smooth-tasting Heineken Export, the world's favorite import, introduced to America in 1894. Take everything you know about action, danger, and suspense, and kiss them all. Good night. The long kiss. Good night. Will she say, I love it? You shouldn't have. It's just what I wanted. Or will she say, nothing at all? Diamond Solitaire. This Christmas goes straight for the heart. Hello again. Next Tuesday, my Chancellor, Kenneth Clark, will announce his budget. It would clearly be inappropriate for me to anticipate his decisions in any way. But predictions have already been made by people who frankly should know better that Ken Clark plans to cut taxes in this, the last budget before the general election, in order to bribe you, the public, <laughs> to vote Conservative. When I first heard this preposterous suggestion, <laughs> I laughed. I laughed so hard I had to be given a drink of water. <laughs> but then, a few minutes afterwards, I was overwhelmed by something close to despair. Blimey O'Reilly, I thought. <laughs> Have we reached such a pass in this poor, fractured society of ours that people can actually think that the government might stoop so low as to want to bribe the electorate with tax cuts? I don't mind admitting that when I thought the electorate might be thinking something like that, I cried like a baby. Oh yes, like a baby. I had to be given a glass of milk. <laughs> so let me give you now this firm, categoric assurance, honestly, and from the bottom of my heart, that no government led by me, John Major, will ever attempt to bribe you with tax cuts. Not ever. Never, never, never. No, no. <laughs> and that's a promise. Not that a few extra pounds in your pocket after tax isn't welcome. <laughs> uh, of course it is. A few pounds to buy those little extras that in today's global competitive world make life worth living. Perhaps the only things that do make life worth living. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'd kill for a cordless shaver. <laughs> Normie's got her heart set on the new CD from the three tenors. <laughs> oh yes, but we don't have to have them. We can live without them. Of course we can. <laughs> but don't give up hope. Those little extras can be yours. Trust me. Financed by tax cuts in the normal way, but not as a bribe. No, the bribing people is wrong, morally wrong. Those tax cuts will come because I profoundly believe that taxing people is wrong, morally wrong. Wrong because it takes away your choice to spend your money as you choose. So, the next time you allow yourself that pint of beer, the next time your wife comes home with a brand new lipstick, the next time the nipper skips back from school with a penny screw of lemon sherbet. <laughs> Don't just think, why, this is always how life was meant to be. Think, all this is possible because of the Prime Minister's deeply held moral principles. <laughs> That's all I ask. Good night. <laughs> yes.
Well, you know, this wasn't my first choice of name, you know. I was uh, going to go for Genghis. <laughs> take that, take that, Maureen Pringle. <laughs> yes, allowing women to box makes absolute sense. Well, for a start, it enables us British gals to counter the threat of hundreds of brain-damaged foreign women fighting unrestricted in their own countries and stealing a march on us. Britain can hold its head up high in the knowledge that our broken-nosed, teeth-spitting champs are a match for any foreign interloper. <laughs> Plus, it helps in the war of the sexes. By proving to any men watching that we are just as capable as they are of sustaining irreparable damage to the nervous system, <laughs> triggering off internal bleeding in the skull and possible epileptic fits. <laughs> should put their noses out of joint. <laughs> yes, well, that's it. We'll probably put ours out too. But um, <clears throat> No, the real reason is it's so important because the clampdown on carrying self-defensive weapons like um, pepper spray, mace, anti-mugger devices means that the only way women can protect themselves from attack is by going down the gym, learning how to box properly, so that when some homicidal maniac jumps out of us in an alley, we can stop him dead in his tracks by popping in a gum shield, strapping up our fists, <laughs> slipping on a pair of boxing gloves and saying, right, Queensbury rules, OK? <laughs> Don't worry, after a few blows to the head, it'll all make perfect sense. <laughs> the state funeral. The entire grief-stricken nation gripped in somber mourning. Or is it? Because somewhere amongst the sadness and the sorrow, we found a silver lining. And it's a real gem. Because, you see, this tragic moment in the nation's history does at least give us the chance to road test. We're not here right now, or for the next three months. You better have a look at you two on this rescue mission in <laughs> Wales, don't you? In the land of the lamb, when there is an emergency, there is only one option. Call in the professionals. Genuine mahogany features, original bodywork by... Magnificent 180 brake horsepower straight six awesome throbbing beast. <laughs> so you see, she may have taken her time popping her clogs, but when she reaches the other side, thanks to this hot hatch hearse, she'll be able to burn some serious rubber. <laughs> I said, you may be Her Majesty the Queen to those loyal buggers out there, but to me, you're still the old trout in the daft hat. Hi. Uh, new hi. <laughs> uh, I, I was playing with Ewan's laptop the other day, you know, surfing the internet. Oh, yeah. uh, and I found some very interesting biblical passages I I'd like to share with you. Uh, that, that memorable one in, in St. Paul's email to the Corinthians. <laughs> Faith, hope and civic purpose. Uh, and the greatest of these is civic purpose. Well, I, I know the original word was charity, but unless we learn to adapt old principles, old dogmas, to the modern age, uh, then we shall perish, and our good intentions with us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I think all politicians would do well to study the Bible and adapt its core message in terms uh, of the next spending round. I mean, re remember that, that scene where, where Jesus was addressing the 12 members of his focus group? <laughs> Blessed are the meek. Huh? Okay, for they shall inherit the earth, subject to available resources, within treasury fixed targets. Uh, take, take the Good Samaritan. Did he pass by on the other side? Oh, no. He immediately recognised the case for a reallocation of financial provision uh, on the basis of need, consistent with guaranteed spending commitments and agreed fiscal targets. I mean, one man's salvation is another man's public sector spending commitment. <laughs> and it's easier for a camel to enter the eye of a needle than for me to get a spending commitment past Gordon Brown. <laughs> a man cannot enter the kingdom of heaven unless he meets the agreed criteria for convergence. <laughs> and so finally, 
I, I turned, finally, I turned to God, guidance. Uh, and he said, will you give up your wealth and follow me? And I said, like I always say when I don't know, I said, I think a very good case could be made <laughs> for following you. I, I really do, I do. But, but on the other hand, this must be balanced by an acknowledgement of other claims on resources. Uh, and until we see what the position is when we come to power, uh, it would frankly be very foolish indeed to make a commitment either way. And when I looked up, he'd, he'd bug it off. <laughs> There's a slight change to the advertised programmes tonight on BBC One, starting at seven, when Fergie meets the Maxwells, as the mad redhead meets the two dodgy brothers to talk openly and candidly on camera about how they've coped with the stress of talking openly and candidly on camera. At eight, Ruby Wax meets the evil wife murderer Crippin, and at 9.30, Idi Amin, Pol Pot and Salem Hussein talk to Carol Smiley on the eve of publication of their new book. Finally, at 11, Fergie, the Maxwells, Gaza, Liam Gallagher, Genghis Khan, my brother who had his car broken into last week, and that lizard from Animal Hospital, plus anyone else who's been through the mill a bit recently, gets their own show on television in which they talk openly and candidly about blah, blah, blah. Which should see us through to November 1997, when BBC television will return to normal. <laughs> now, with the millennium only, um... Oh, four years away. People are already making plans. So, Princess Diana, a new millennium. Any thoughts? Um... <laughs> have you got one in blue? <laughs> but think of the problems the new millennium will bring. Hello, and welcome to Film Nought. <laughs> Rather than give John Major the chance to reinvent the Ferris wheel, why not spend the money on something comparatively sane, like a, a much bigger party, in which case the invitations will have to go out early. The time? December the 31st, 1999. The place? My flat. Are you in the area? Please. Do you call? Oh, hello. Did you get an oral invitation? <laughs> Would you like one? <laughs> for an MC, you need someone who's comparatively at home with world leaders, if only because he's had them all for lunch. Hello. Good evening. And Prozac. <laughs> and now, the people who need no introduction. The caterers. OK, right, on me, Dennis, now, while I try and separate an egg with one hand. An old trick taught to me by a tame obstetrician down at the Dog and Speculum. Right. <laughs> now, OK, what does a thousand years mean in catering terms, Dennis? Well, for one thing, it means a hell of a lot of washing up. OK, <laughs> right, OK, you wash and I'll put away. Ah, oh, Dom Perignon, I'll put that away, no problem. <laughs> and, then, and then we can start on the shorts. <laughs> so, uh, so there you are. <laughs> you know, you're at the party, you know. <laughs> Knock on the door. You know. And it's the man, the man from the AA, you know. <laughs> standing there with his jump leads <laughs> and he say okay come in <laughs> but for god's sake don't start anything <laughs> okay all right moving on move on ding dong ding dong right the doorbell's gone uh, so what the hell made that noise okay uh, well, me, obviously. all right by way of welcoming the next arrival uh tony slattery well clive i've got a cucumber and a colon uh, right well more of that after the water <laughs> Okay, right. You want to be uh, you want to you want to be everyone uh, really at this party so the most important thing is to invite someone who will ensure that the evening starts with a bang uh, just two ingredients <laughs> Slow gin and fast women. <laughs> I think you know where I'm coming from. <laughs> the cupboard under the stairs, of course. Uh, postman's knock, we're talking. Uh, we're talking first class mail. Ladies, licked or franked? <laughs> right, Frank. Uh, <laughs> and to mark the occasion, the 1999 poet laureate encants his thoughts of home. With a bird that is free. <laughs> Sing as sweetly as a bird that is barbecued at a thousand degrees in a 30 mile long chicken drink. <laughs> By now the guests are arriving in hordes. Okay, right, there's your ingredients, you see, Dennis. Celebrities of every hue, every colour under the sun lamp. Eventually the place is so packed you can only tell who's there by the old snippet of conversation. Bong, and tonight's main story is bong. The New Year's Honours list, still hoping, Mum. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, if, if, if you're like me, <laughs> you're, you're, you're probably saying, nice millennium party, but, but not as good as the last one. <laughs> but, but, but before you know it, it's the countdown to midnight. <clears throat> Here we go, right, okay, Thespians. Ten, nine, eight. Line, prompt, prompt, prompt. <laughs> I think you'll find in actual fact, it is in fact seven. Anyway, this is the best bit. On the stroke of midnight, everyone makes a wish. Uh, Mossy, are you still there? Uh, yes, very much so, I have to say. Yeah. Uh, probably takes a while to work, that wish. <laughs> it's all the atmosphere on both sides of the house as we leave it as one of distinctly ecumenical bonhomie. 
But as the nation is lost in revelry, some of us are still out there plying our trade. Right. Who called for a minicab? Thank you. <laughs> Smile, an everlasting smile We'll still be here next year, you see <laughs> You may think our chance is gone But we're inclined to disagree <laughs> It's still that same old story At heart you're all still Tory earthlings So I love that we don't even mean a single word we say. We all care, Sean. They're only words, and words are all we have to win your vote next May. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> talk. Oh, yeah. Well, of course, of, of course, talk. In everlasting words. Well, of course, words. Natural communication. New labour. Spangles. Uh, laptops. <laughs> and I was listening to the wife and she could talk the ass off me. <laughs> Says, John, don't say a thing you mean and you will be okay. It's only words and words are all we have uh, in an endogenous and prudent way. <laughs> Policy da 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 The very best of Rory Bremner, who else is out now on video in the shops. See, people forget that almost one out of every three cowboys was black. That was a gamble, Father Time. And this here was Crazy Little Jay. The big man was a bobo. And then there was Wheezy. And then, of course, there was the leader. We all got to go to hell. When you get there, tell them Jesse Lee sent you. These cats was the original posse. Sunday at 10 on 4. A new survey has predicted that in 25 years' time, more people will be affected by mental illness than infectious diseases. So is modern day living making us mad? Jon Snow and guests debate the issues in Weekly Planet next. Don't, don't, don't be bored, Carl! What's the number then? Oh! 891! 47, 47, 47. Ooh! Everyone's back home for Christmas. Ready with gifts and with fun. Iceland make everything easy, especially for Mum. For your Christmas time dreaming. For mum. American Express, how may I help you? Let's see. Business class, I'll see as usual. Travel insurance? Yes, I'm sure we can find a plan to suit you. Our credit card would let you spread payments over time. Right now, you have enough points for a flight to Paris. You have enough points for a dinner for two. We made an arrangement just for our customers. I was just calling to check everything turned out all right. Glad we could help. Maybe it's time you let American Express help you do more. To make sure you stay cool under pressure, no the 1997 Laguna comes with air conditioning and an electric sunroof as standard. Laguna by Renault. It's all worked out beautifully. St. James, 
she was stretched out on a long white table So sweet, so cold, so wet Let her go, let her go, oh, God bless her Wherever she may be She can look this whole wide world over And never find another man like me Very best of the fine young cannibals. Their 14 finest tracks on one classic album, including the latest hit, The Flame. Fine Young Cannibals, the finest. Introducing Baby Expressions from Formosa. Have fun this Christmas as she laughs and smiles when you pick her up. If you put her down again, she'll cry and wave her arms. Baby Expressions from Formosa. Toys R Us price $38.99. New computer technology at Redbase 1.4 has greatly improved response times. We were actually reaching 88% of calls in 14 minutes. Even so, the chief executive loses his job. I wasn't sure what else the bloke could have done. And the ambulance crews come under increasing pressure to perform. Pretty tame night. With all this upheaval, the unions prepare for action. You've got to realise that you're in for a battle. Redbase 1.4 continues this Sunday at 9 on 4. Witness the miracle of life. Seen through the lens of the award-winning photographer, Leonard Nielsen. Marrying the eye of an artist with revolutionary techniques. An unexpected perspective, unraveling the basic laws of nature. A journey to uncharted landscapes, exploring their beauty. The Saga of Life, Saturday at 8 on 4. Give me the information, I'll make up my own mind. 